What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 561. And today, Andrew and I are going to discuss and hopefully answer the question, is learning martial arts history beneficial to training? And as I just said, I'm joined here today by Andrew Adams. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. And what are we doing? Well, we are bringing you another episode of Martial Arts Radio. And why? Because we love martial arts. We love traditional martial arts. So that's why we do what we do. That's why everybody here at Whistlekick does what they does. There's some terrible grammar for you. And if you want to see all the things that we does, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find everything over there from links to the various projects that we've got going on, some of our friends, content that we make, as well as our store. And if you check out the store, you're going to find a bunch of stuff there. If something grabs your eye, use the code PODCAST15, saves you 15%, help support the show. Now, if, if you want to check out the website for this podcast, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go. We bring you two episodes every week, all under the heading of connecting and educating and entertaining traditional martial artists throughout the world. We bring you guest interviews and topic conversations, and we really try to mix it up. We try to give you stuff that makes you go, hmm. And if you've got a question or a subject or a guest suggestion, don't be afraid to reach out. Best way, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. See, this is a challenge with going video. That's right. This is a video episode is I can't read my notes without you knowing. <laughs> I can't just sit here with, with the notes in front of my face. This is where we need like a teleprompter or something, but you know what? We're, we're, on a, we're on a shoestring budget with these shows. And if you want to help us out, there we go. What can you do? Well, you can share episodes. You can leave reviews. You can follow us on social media. You can write in. You can comment on things, or you can support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. For as little as two bucks a month, we're going to throw you additional content. In fact, I would suggest, I'd even make the, the argument that we give you more than you give us because that, that's that's the goal. We're trying to give you so much value that you go, oh, this is a no-brainer. Okay. Well, today, Andrew, we've got a, a pretty intense question here. This is this is a question that may, I don't know if it's going to ruffle feathers, but I, I suspect people have pretty strong opinions on it regardless. I, Does learning the history of your martial art, your specific school and or style, et cetera, does it have an impact on your training or effective utilization of the material in the art? That is the question. And uh, I mean, we could we could make this podcast really short and say yes or no, and then be done with it. But I think we should probably delve a little deeper. <laughs> one, one of us can say yes, the other can say no, and then oh. we can just fade to the outro, and then, and then everybody really mad. <laughs> I think on on a surface level, I study currently. I study in Shorinru Karate, uh, founded by Chotoku Kian. On a surface level, knowing that he was born in 1870 and he died in 1945, that does not help me punch or kick. No, it does not. And anybody who suggests otherwise, I don't know how you get there. Yeah, I, I don't any. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I just I don't I don't see it. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to spend a long time trying to connect those dots because I don't see that happening. Yeah. So I would say on a surface level, knowing some of this history and and some of it is dates, right? When people died or who the founder sure. of your school was um, on a surface level, I don't think that necessarily helps. But I think when you start looking more in depth within your training, I think it absolutely can make a difference. I agree. Now, I'm going to take what is going to seem like a complete hard left turn as I go philosophical, because this is this is what I do, right? Like, I, I, I put weird spins on things, but this is how my brain works on this. We've heard on the show a few times, recently even, that if we think of basics as words, forms could be like a poem or a story. And if we start to think of martial arts and, and the style styles that you learn as languages, then I think it becomes maybe not easy, but at least easier to start to see how the history can have an impact. Anybody who's studied language knows that language evolves. And we know that languages don't just spontaneously pop up. They derive from other languages. And new languages might combine multiple other languages. 
is this starting to sound familiar? This is how we describe martial arts and their origination. And the more we understand about where those languages, aka martial arts, come from, the more we can make some under educated guesses or maybe even really learn some solid information about why this word didn't make it from this language to this language, aka why, why was that technique or that form left out as we come to understand the founder of the style and the initial pioneers, the, the students. Because anybody who suggests, I, I will draw a hard line in the sand here, anybody who suggests that that instructor who founded that style did not have input from their students because who are they training on? Who are they beating up to see if it works? It's their students. And who they had available to them and what they were versed in and good at is going to have an impact too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, even it goes through today. Every instructor that teaches today is partially taught by their students. So yeah. why would it not be the case 150 years ago? Exactly. Exactly. Now, when, when we go back far enough we can see that martial arts seem to be more simplistic. When I look at arts that, and, and I'll confess, I am not a martial arts scholar. I am, I am not any of the people who have appeared on this show that really dig into it. I'm not uh, Jesse Ancomp. I'm not Richard Baitlick. I'm not these folks who really dig the digging and yeah. understanding the history. And Andrew, I don't know that you are, I, I know you appreciate history, but I don't think you're, Digging through old books, no, to no. uncover these facts. Okay, so full disclosure, you know that's that's not where where we are, and I think that that actually is better for the conversation because I love history. I enjoy history. I'll watch the History Channel. I'll watch old movies. I like learning about the past, but that's not what I love the most about martial arts. And I'm not someone who's going to sit down and read through martial arts history books. I'm not. You know, I, I've I've got a bunch of books on my bookshelf that relate to martial arts. I'm not the type of person who rereads them three, four, 12 times to get every little nugget of information out of them. That's not me. Is that you? No, no, not me either. Okay. So if that's not either of us, then, you know, I think we're probably pretty representative of most people. And so the question is, if I go back, if I underst if I sit down, let's say with my instructor, which I've done with most of them, and say, tell me your history, does that inform me as their student. If I go back and I read a book on, you know, uh, one of one of my uh, original instructors, their style was Ishinru. If I go back and I dig up everything I can on Shimabuku, who founded Ishinru, does that make me a better Ishinru practitioner? And I think the best answer is it depends. It yeah. depends on what I'm learning, why I'm learning, and how I'm applying it. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree. It's such, such a tough thing to, to get into, but you're right. It depends on what you're learning and how you're learning it and what your rationale is for learning it. If, if we think about martial arts as having relevance to who you are, where you come from, how you're built, what your goals are, et cetera, we talk about the why on this show quite a bit. And the why for everyone who's ever trained is relevant to what their output is, what they train, how they their training manifests in their forms or freeform technique or whatever it is. The styles of Okinawa, Japan, it anywhere have relevance to height, weight, weapons available. Those are all obvious, right? We 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 get that implicitly. Oh, okay. Well, people back then were smaller so you are unlikely to see a eight foot long bow you know for those of you who don't train in kabuto a bow staff right i'm not going to call it a bow staff i know that that <laughs> that's nails on a chalkboard to some of you <laughs> a bow is meant to be a little bit taller than than you right so we're not seeing an eight foot bow because there weren't very many seven feet tall seven foot tall martial artists these are things that have some relevance does it help me as Joe student to know the birth date of the founder? You already answered that. No, it doesn't. There, there's nothing there. But does it help me feel more passionate about my training? Because I now have some understanding of where it came from. And not just passionate, but connected. Mm, that's a better word. Connected. Yep. And the answer for some people is absolutely. For others, not at all. 
So it depends. Yeah. And, uh, and I think one of the other really neat things about looking into some of the history of the martial arts is seeing how they're connected, you know, seeing how, mm. uh, uh, again, for mo- most of the people listening know that I'm a karate practitioner and that's what I do. Seeing how the the main styles of karate went from Okinawa to Japan and the change that happened when it went there and why, mm-hmm. and then how some practitioners took some of that karate they were learning and went to Korea and used it to form their styles and how they're all connected, but yet not connected. I mean, it's really, really right. neat. And to right. see why they did the things that they did. And I think there's an important uh, correlation we can draw between martial arts, styles, and sports, professional sports. So bear with me. We know, what what is the word RU, R-Y-U, as we translate it? What does that mean in English? It means school. Ishin, RU. Goju, RU. Shito, RU, right? These weren't pioneered as styles. They were pioneered as schools. And the best example I can think of when we start thinking about schools rather than styles are things like football, American football. You think you hear about various uh, NFL or college level programs that have styles of offense or defense or plays that are ascribed to them. You think about, and, and I wish I had thought of this example before we started recording because now now I'm 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 lacking I'm not a uh, I'm not an expert at football in fact I'm I'm barely a fan of football but you 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 hear this talked about you hear certain coaches bring their style west coast offense I've heard that discussed within the NFL certain coaches will bring their style with them to other teams it's not a different game it's a different way of playing the game so when we start to think about that there are some things that we can imagine we can imagine that the schools that had better instruction and maybe better results for what people wanted were more likely to succeed one of the things that i love about martial arts is that the constant iteration and the good stuff tends to stick around does that that comparison does that that work for you yeah that that makes sense i mean i i i will admit i'm also not a big sports guy uh, but but I, I can totally see where you're coming from, and that makes sense. So if we think about it that way, we've got some understanding, and we've got some things that have survived maybe accidentally. Hmm. It, you don't have to dig too far. You, Funakoshi says flat out in his writings, I'm not trying to create a style, or I didn't want to create a style. This is This is just my stuff. Don't don't make a big thing out of it, but we did. And we tend to hold those things up. We tend to, to, um, there can almost be a religious fervor level dedication to some historical aspects of martial arts when, again, does that serve you or not? And it depends. I feel like we're being really circuitous as we talk through this. <laughs> and that's maybe because I, I, I don't know about you, but depending on the day, I could answer this differently. Yeah, it's, you know, and I think another thing to keep in mind as well is um, the, we're talking a little bit more about the people um, and what they, they've they done, but I think keeping in mind some of the writings of some of the founders of these styles hold a lot of weight for just understanding what they meant. Mm. A, a perfect example is, uh, I'm, Funakoshi had written, I'm pretty sure, uh, in one of his precepts that uh, karate has many stances and yet it has none. Mm. Like that's that's such a weird thing to say, right? And then think about, well, why? Like what does that mean? And I have taken that to mean when you are a beginner and you're learning, karate has many stances. Right. You're learning front stance, you're learning back stance, you're learning side stance, you're learning all these different stances. And yet when you become a more advanced practitioner, they're just transitional. You're just moving from one to the next. You're not really necessarily moving into this position and stopping and then throwing a technique. You're flowing from one to the next. And so understanding his 
writings can help make you a better practitioner. Totally. Totally. So I think at this point, my, my thought for the listeners, the viewers, cause we're doing this one in video and that's still weird for me, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it depends on your why. What's your why? If you are training strictly for, let's say, self-defense, combative sort of aspects, I don't know how relevant history is. Because you can find out, well, this technique or combination or form or whatever was included because it was deemed to be the most effective, deadly, powerful, whatever. But what if that doesn't work for you? I don't know that that matters. But for most of us, we're training for other reasons. We're training for community and maybe health, personal growth, all of those things. And so in those cases, I would say understanding at least some history is really important. When we had Hanshi Bruce Jutnik on, he talked a lot about history. In fact, uh, I don't remember what episode number that is. And this is one of the challenges of doing videos. I can't just grab my phone and quickly do a Google on it. Uh, but that that episode, we spent much of our time talking about the importance of history and understanding where we came from. And I'm not saying you have to go out and read every martial arts book. I, I don't think you should. I think if you've got that much time, you should probably spend more time training. But <laughs> reading some of them, reading a book, reading some articles at marshalljournal.com, maybe. By involving yourself in some of the history, you start to understand that martial arts doesn't just start and stop at the four walls where you train that it is it is something much bigger and it's something that connects us and when we think about that connection for me it gives me some something to lean on it gives me some a, a crutch in a sense for life this thing that i love so much has been around for a long time and i'm not the only person who loves it i'm not the only person whose life it has completely impacted even transformed or saved it exists and it's something that while it is not religious in the way that i view it if you think of modern religions and what a lot of people take from them it checks a lot of the same boxes and i'm not saying that to be blasphemous i'm saying it to to help you understand that i think if the more you know about you and your place in your training the better off you are however any of that is defined for you. Absolutely. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. I, I didn't leave you a lot of space to say anything there, did I? I just that's all I right. took all the words. No, yeah. that's great. A, a great summation. Thank you. Uh, do we have more to add before we, we head out? I don't. Okay. Well, if you do, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this and you say, but Jeremy and Andrew, you missed. Brr, we want to hear it. We definitely want to hear it. You can... Go to YouTube and you can find this episode 561. Drop a really mean comment because lately that's that's what people do. They leave mean comments. Although I'll be honest, Facebook has gotten meaner than YouTube. YouTube's backed off a little bit. It's more spammy. Wow. But Facebook is way meaner and it's meaner from people who know you, which is not kind. Or you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll share the feedback with Andrew. You can post it at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Lots of ways, but we do care what you think. And if you've got a, a topic or a guest suggestion, you know, let me know about those too. Okay. Uh, don't forget, if you want to help support us, buy something at whistlekick.com, support the Patreon, share an episode, all the above, all important, all good. And we thank you for being here. If, where did I miss? Did I miss anything? I don't think so. This is an interesting transition as Jeremy starts to go off paper <laughs> prize and gets the order of things really messed up. No, that's it. We did it. Our social media accounts are at Whistlekick. This is Andrew. I'm Jeremy. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 